I'm hearing is the most, one of the most dominant senses I have in person. It's the first sense that's developed in the womb. It's very much uh, such an important sense that the Gemara says that partial is the Mekuloi, often it's all injures another person, rendered them deaf, and they can't hear. Something about the sense of hearing that's connected to the essence of a person. The essence of being human is connected to Shmiya. If you had in the uh, in the book we had a teacher from the Maral. The Maral writes Kadusha Gals of Kadushin. The language of morale is ki adam hu adam idea always of the frat. That the human being is a human being through listening. Listening creates the human being. <coughs> what is it about being human that we have to hear? That hearing is connected to the essence of what it means to be human. So we'll start with this machlokes. There's an argument between. Achmei Omris is an argument between the philosophers, between, and the Greeks, between Aristotle and Plato. And this machlekes, this argument is brought down by the Rishon. The Rishon, they don't quote who they're quoting. Some do, some don't. And this is the argument. The argument is like this. What is the most refined and the most important sense of you? So Aristotle argued the sense of sight, seeing, and that's also the opinion which is brought down in the Abnazar, in Shemais Kimmel, in Aram Bagam, in Hashem. And other Rishonim, other philosophers write, Hashem, Aristo, that this idea, this sense, is the highest sense. Then there is the other, the other philosophers, the other group, Kabbalah mostly, like the Raman, in the Munavitacha. And that we've quoted a lot of them in the sources. That Shmi Yosedak and Nechvod Miriam, like that's the language of the Rakanti Mereshes. That the Chus Shmiya is the most refined and the delicate of all the senses. This is the opinion of Plato. And you see that in general it's an argument between, in this, these two Rishonim, it's an argument between the Chakrim and the Mukabalim. The Chakrim, which are the philosophers, argue for the supremacy, the supremacy of sight. And the Mukabal and the Kabbalists argue for the supremacy of hearing. It's interesting that the Zoyar, there's a Zoyar that says, Asha'im Bamum, where it talks about the Paraduma, Asha'im Bamum. So the Zoyar says that Chachma Siyavon is Aim Bamum, that the wisdom of the Greeks is pure and refined, there's no Mum. And it's similar to the Chachmi, to Chachmi Yisrael. And Sharamun Makadman brings on B'Shem Arakanti that this refers to pre Taylor philosophy. So there's, whether you see something, that's the most important thing. I see it, therefore I believe it. Empirically it's true because I can see it or touch it. Or something becomes even more true through the sense of hearing. We'll have to understand this a little bit further. What does it mean specifically about the sense of hearing? In general, the idea of Shmiya, which also is brought down, we brought down from Chuvas Arajba, and also the Tzedel Laderach, Chuvas Arajba, that, um, that the idea of Shmiya means three things. Shmiya can mean Shmiya's Eisen, you're listening with your ear, you're hearing. Shmiya can mean Ladas, an understanding. And Shmiya is Lekabel, to receive something, to bring it to your heart, to, to, to understand it. This is also what Rashi writes in the Posse with Leshama al Moshe, the Kaitzeruach. So Rashi says, Lekibul Tanchumim, they didn't receive what Moshe said. So the idea of Shmiya is a type of Kabbalah. We're going to go with this Mahalach, and this is what the Mizrahi writes that Shmiya is Lashon Kabbalah. Shma Beni Musar Avicha, Shma Beni means, listen, the Posse says, Mishle Shma Beni Musar Avicha means, the Kabbal, like the Mitzvah David said, to receive the Musar of Avicha, to receive the tradition of your ancestors. 
Also brought down Meshav in the middle of the Rebbe that Shmir means Havana Vasaga, to, to be maven, to understand it, like he writes in Ner Mitzvah Torah. So this is one idea, that the Ikir idea of, of, of Shmir, of hearing, is to receive something. L'Kavol. We have also the word Shmir that Shal calls out, so Rashi does Lashna Chrazi, he calls out, but Dardak says Lashna Sifa, that he's gathering together, gathering together, that bringing people together to receive. So we're going to use this understanding of Shmir a little bit more, but what it means to be a human, that we say that the Maral, and this is what we say, Chosh and the that the idea of the definition of being human is to hear. And hearing specifically is a type of receiving. We had this uh, maral somewhere where he talks about the ear, and the lotion of the maral was it's a maral bear, a girl, and gimel. They say, Your eyes and your mouth has an opening and closing. You can open your mouth, you can close your mouth. The ear is always open. It's always open to receive your eyes. You can close your eyes and you're sleeping. Your mouth, you can close your mouth and talking, but your ears are always open to receive. And he says, If the, if the, if the, if the, the doctors and the scientists are going to tell you that there's some uh, natural, uh, selective, or scientific explanation, biology explanation why the ears are open. He says, Alta Savala said, don't desire this type of interpretation. Um, that the idea of the ear is to receive. The ear, the, the capacity to hear is to receive, to be in, in a modality of receiving at all times. This is what the definition of the ear is, and we'll see how it's connected to hearing. So let's start, because it's Rosh Hashanah, we talked a little bit about this idea and over this course of the week. We talked about Shoifer, so we'll talk about the famous Machlaikis in the Rishonim. There's a famous Machlaikis in the Rishonim, which is the Nusach HaBracha. What is the language, what is the way we should phrase the Bracha that when we recite the bracha on Birchas HaShoifer, what is the bracha we should say? So the Rosh, in the end of Rosh Hashanah, in Perik Dalad Yud, brings down the Shittas HaTaisvis, the Shittas HaRbenetam, it's also brought down the Reim, also brought in the Smag Mitzvah and Beis, that the bracha is Al Tkiyas Shoifer. The bracha means that you should, the blessing you should make is on the mitzvah of blowing the Shoifer. It's not clear, like you see in the rush itself, it's not clear 100% if, if Rabbi Tam is talking about specifically tkia, not shmia, or he's just saying that the bracha is al, al and not le, which is also possible. But the Karban Asanel, and, and it's also brought down the Sefer Yasha in the, in the Rabbi Tam itself, and the Be'otam Meri Meri Rucham, that actually Tois is actually, Rabbi Tam is holding that you have to make a bracha al tkia shefer, the, the mitzvah is litkoya shefer, to make a bracha litkoya. Litkoya kol shayfer, I'm sorry, litkoya, not al. Litkoya shayfer, to blow the shayfer. The Rambam paskins in Hilchus shayfer. The Rambam paskins, no, the mitzvah is actually, the mitzvah is lishmaya kol shayfer. And the bracha that we have to make, the nusach bracha, is lishmaya kol shayfer, which is the opinion of Rashi, the Rambam, it's brought down the Goinim, and that's the way it's brought down in Shulchan Aruch, Simen Tafkupehe, that the bracha is lishmaya kol shayfer, that's the mitzvah bracha. To make Shmaya Kol Shaifer. There's the Tshuva of the Rambam, which is also on page 82. Tshuva of the Rambam in Sim Ben Beis, where the Rambam writes that when we talk about the Nusach Abracha, what is Taka, what is the what is this, what is the liturgy of how we make the blessing? L'shmaya, to hear the sound of the shayfer, to call the shayfer, or to blow the shayfer. So the Pashtas, this argument is connected with the argument, what is the Iker Mitzvah shayfer? Not only the Nusach, but what is the Iker Mitzvah shayfer? Is the Mitzvah to blow the shayfer? Or the Mitzvah is to hear the shayfer? 
So the Rambam writes that the mitzvah he has shmi of loyat kia, in Shuvas Rambam, it's also in Shuvas Peir Adore, it's also called Sikhsim and Kufman Beis. The Rambam ain't on the toikim elikadei l'shmoya. The mitzvah is to hear. Why do you blow? You blow because you can't hear if you don't blow. Kemoisha mitzvah yeshivas ha sukkah v'lo yasa. The mitzvah of sukkah is to sit in the sukkah, not to make the sukkah. But you can't sit in the sukkah if you didn't make the sukkah, so you have to make the sukkah. Maybe it's, it's like a hechsher mitzvah. And so the hechsher mitzvah you, is, is not the ikr the mitzvah. The ikr mitzvah is to hear the shayfer, but since it's the hechsher mitzvah, it's to blow. So therefore, you have to blow the shayfer to hear the shayfer. This is, this is the machlaikas between the Roshayinim, basically between the Rabbeinu Tam, let's say between the Rabbeinu Tam and the Rambam, if the ikr mitzvah, the mitzvah, or is the mitzvah to blow the shayfer, or the mitzvah is to hear the sound of the shayfer. By, by, for example, by the, the mitzvah of, by the mitzvah of shayfer and yoyvel, so in the, the Ramam writes clearly, in Shmit of Yevel Perik Yud Yud, the Ramam writes clearly, mitzvah litkoya b'shayfer, the mitzvah is to blow the shayfer. Have you called shayfer b'machli? You have to blow the shayfer on the, on the shnasa yoyvel. And when the mitzvah of Rosh Hashanah is lishmoya kol shayfer. So clearly there's a, there's a distinction between blowing the shayfer, and we'll see why, Taka, what's the difference between yoyvel and shmit, shmit on yoyvel and, and shayfer, on Rosh Hashanah. One is to blow the shayfer is the mitzvah's tkiah, and one of the mitzvah is the shmia. In the Torah, before we get to this a little further, in the Torah it just says yom turu yilachem. Yom turu yilachem means a day of blowing the shayfer, which seems to suggest that the mitzvah is to blow, not to hear, right? Because it says, yom tru, a day that there is a shoifer. Tru, we know, is a shoifer. So yom tru, yilachem, so blow a shoifer. Where, is, where does Chazal, or where does the Rishonim understand that the mitzvah is l'shmoya kol shoifer? If, if it's actually the mitzvah is yom tru, yilachem. Tiku, b'choy, the shoifer. You have to blow, b'choy, the shoifer. Rachmana, amar t'koy. The Rachmana says, you should blow. Okay, blowing is not listening. The mitzvah should be to blow. How did Chaz, how did some of the Rishonim learn it. That's the halacha that, that we learn that the mitzvah is actually to hear it, not to blow it. This idea, if the mitzvah is to blow and to hear, which seems to be a strict, clear machleik of the Rishonim, because that's the way it's in the liturgy, is not absolute. All the Rishonim learn the Shagas Ay and Simon Vav, the Mitzvah Chinuch and Tafei, and it's really a diuk also the Alter Rebbe writes in Shulchan Aruch. That really, it's not pshat, doesn't mean that the mitzvah is only to blow the shayfer or only to hear the, the shayfer. It's impossible. The, and the two famous rayas that both the Shagasar and the Chachim bring, the Alter Rebbe doesn't bring it, but the two famous rayas is from the Gemaras that we learned. The first Gemara that we learned is Hatakei B'Seich HaBoyer. The Mishnah says, in Chavzayin, a person blows in the, in the boyer. So the Mishnah says, that the people that are chutz l'boyer are not yotze. The person that's in the boyer seems to be that the person is yotze. Why? Why is the person in the boyer yotze? The person chutz l'boyer, the outside the boyer. First of all, why we said, why is the person blowing the boyer? Because it's sasha shmad, like the Meir writes. So some type of, some type of danger. And Kali so the people have to hide to blow the shoifer in, 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 in boyers or myers. They have to go inside. So that's the scenario that happened. Yeah, but not if you're in the boyer. If you're in the boyer, it's closed, the boyer is closed, you don't hear it, no one hears it. This is the Meiri writes. The point is that why, the, why is the person outside the boyer? Because koil avar, he, he's a, it's a koil, it's, it's a irvuv, he hears two koilas, so therefore he's not yaitza. The person in the boyer, so like the, the lashna of the Ritz of is that mistama he heard, mistama he heard the sound of the shoifer. Mistama he heard the sound of the shoifer. The Alter Rebbe actually writes, Bevada shama, he certainly heard the sound of the shoifer, but if you're Mesupik, by the way, your question that you asked yesterday, how do we know if you're hearing a koil avar or koil or not? Actually, the Rosh says that, and therefore he says, loy plug. The Rosh on, that, on this Gemara says that therefore the people outside the bar will say, always hear the koil avar. The people inside the bar always hear the koil shoifer, and loy plug. You can't say, was I, I was inside, did I hear the koil avar or heard the koil shoifer? You're in the shul, you heard the shoifer. You're outside the shul, you heard the koil avar. That's the Russian says that because he says it, you can't give it to, you can't allow this subtlety for every single person to decide that I hear this, that I hear that, I didn't know other thing. Okay. But what do we see from that Gemara? We see from that Gemara that a person blows the shoifer, let's say, and, and, uh, and, and, uh, um, and let's say he doesn't hear the shoifer, 
Let's say the person inside is not Bavade, let's say it's Basafik, we'll go like the Alter and, and he doesn't sure, he's not sure. If you heard Bavar, he didn't hear Bavar. If the mitzvah is Tkiya Shafer, like Rebbe Tam, so why are you not Yoitza? Right? So it can be that the mitzvah is only Tkiya. The other side of, is another Mishnah. The other, the other Mishnah says, in Chavtes, the Mishnah says, Cher Shaitva Katan, the blows of Shafer, you're not Yoitza the mitzvah. When you hear the, from a Cher Shaitva Katan, you're not Yoitza the mitzvah of Tkiya Shafer. But if the mitzvah is Shmiya Shafer, what do you care if the person is a Bar Chiyuvi? You heard the Shafer. So what's the chilek of the Chayr Shaitva the Katan blows the Shafer? Okay, so Zadir, you could say that you have to, be a, uh, you have to hear the Shafer from a Chiyuv, like a, a mitzvah, a mitzvah dika Shafer. So from these rayas, they say that the, the mitzvah is actually both. The mitzvah is the tekiah and the true and the, and the, and the shmi and the tekiah. The Alter Rebbe writes, "Ene ikar mitzvah, shatkiah ene ikar mitzvah, ela shmiyas kol shoifer u ikar mitzvah." The ikar is taka the shemeya. So he, said, he says, but since the ikar is taka the shemeya, however, bekomokem im over at all birch litkoyeh b'shoifer yatsa. Therefore, if you made a mistake and didn't send the shmiyas kol shoifer, you made litkoyeh shoifer you yatsa. It's taka not the ikar mitzvah, not like the Rambam. Right? The Rambam says that it's only a chana. It's a hechsher. It's like building a sukkah. There's no mitzvah to build a sukkah. The mitzvah is you should sit in the sukkah. Yeshivas ha sukkah. Sukkah's teisha, yeshivas yami. You have to sit in the sukkah. But it seems to be that there's an opinion to say that we'll go with the system, the, the svara, like most achorinim, that there's actually both. The tkiya and the tzura. And, and the shmiya. Do they say always that it's before and after? Or what do you mean? You say before, of course. Because Avilav Yasam. Oh, everyone says Avilav Yasam. Everyone says that. Yeah, you have to make a bracha Avilav Yasam. You're making a bracha. You're going to hear Lishmaya Kol Shaifer. Okay, but what happens if you made Lishmaya Kol According to the Svar, according to the Ramam, it says Lishmaya is only the mitzvah, and the other thing is only a hechsha mitzvah. You don't make, you make a bracha, you're not Yoytze. You made a bracha in the wrong mitzvah. So there's a type of, there's a, there's a, there's a tkia, and the tkia has to have shmi. Even according to the opinion, it has to be a tkia. It's like what we, lo, we learn in the Gemara from Gemara Brachas and Tazvav, where it talks about how Ham say that the mitzvah, the mitzvah is kriya, kriya satayra, uh, kriya, kriya is krishma, if clearly the mitzvah is krishma. Right? The mitzvah krishma, the, the whole yoim, you have to say krishma. You don't have to hear yourself saying krishma. But Rabbi Yossi says, in loisham, loyatza, in loyit If you don't hear it, loyatza. Because if you, if you sound a sound that cannot be heard, it's as if you didn't sound the sound. This is the, this is the, uh, this is the svara of saying that even though the mitzvah, is, the mitzvah will be tkiya, still you have to hear it. Okay. But the shaila is a real shaila, another shaila. Really, the Shaila is the, the Rambam asks the Shaila. And the Rambam asks the Shaila, and therefore, this is the proof that the Rambam says in the midst of Shmi is called Shaifer. To hear the Shaifer, not to blow the Shaifer. The Rambam asks a very simple Shaila. If the Mitzvah was taka Tkia Shaifer, the Mitzvah is to blow the Shaifer. Then you would have to blow the shoifer. If the mitzvah shmi has called shoifer to hear the sound of the shoifer, okay, so I heard the sound of the shoifer. But if the mitzvah is that have to do, there's a chiv on the gavra, right? It's a mitzvah shibigufoy. There's a mitzvah shibigufoy, I have to blow the shoifer. So how could you blow the shoifer for me? So the Ramos says if the mitzvah is actually tekiah shoifer, then you can't, you can't nominate a shliach. You can't tell someone if there's a mitzvah shibigufoy, I have to put on film. Okay, I'm not in the mood of putting on film. I'm going to make you a shliach to put on film for me. Could be yoitzer? Uh, could someone be yoitzer put on the for you? No. Could some mitzvah be good for you? There's a mitzvah every single yid should be should blow the shofar. So how is the person that's hearing the sound of the shofar yoitzer? So therefore the Rambam says, therefore Zarai is a proof that the mitzvah is actually shemiyah, not kia. But that question is on on Rabbi Natan. The question is according to the opinion that says that the mitzvah is actually the tkoya shofar. How are we yoitzer l'shitas Rabbi Natan? How is a person yoitza mitzvah tkiya shoifer by listening to the shoifer when the mitzvah is actually they should blow the shoifer? What's the svara? So there's a svara. There's a svara. And the Martcha brings the svara. The Martcha says, in the end of Rosh Hashanah, in Tav Shechav Aleph, the Martcha says, the svara is Shemei Ka'ina. What's, this, what's, this, what's the idea of Shemei Ka'ina? Shemei Ka'ina means like this. There's two ways. Shemei Ka'ina means the, the listener is like the responder. This is a very important understanding. You could say Shemei Ka'ina means, can mean two things. One level of Shemei Ka'ina means when someone is listening to someone else say, let's say, a bracha. 
And this is a, the laws of brachas. You can make a bircha samazim for another person, shemei ka'ina. The mitzvah is that you have to make a bircha samazim, but if someone else is mechuyiv and makes a bircha samazim for you, you answer amen, shemei ka'ina yuyotza. What's the svar? You could say two things. One is, I heard bircha samazim. Okay, so you heard bircha samazim, so therefore you're yuyotza by listening. Or you can say, shemei ka'ina means, in the language of the Alter Rebbe, in hechaz brachas, it's in hechaz bircha samazim, it's piv kipiv. The shliach tzibur and the and the 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 mouth of the person speaking the shliach tzibur becomes like your mouth. When you respond and say amen to something, it's not only that you received what is being said, but you're actually participating in what's being said. This is a, this this is you're doing a ma'isa, you're doing an action. Listening is an action. The act of listening is not only do I listen, it's passive, and I'm hearing what you're saying, but shemeya is actually ka'ina. Shemeya is actually as if I myself responded. So this is a question we have to understand. What is it that we say that this klal, this is a very big principle, because a normal din of shlichas, where in the normal din of shlichas, I sent you my shliach. And even if you say, you say like the, you know, yes of Engel, the highest level of shlich is that kigufay mamish, I still can't make another person my shliach to put on tefillin for me, if it's a mitzvah shibigufay. But by brachas, by dvarim shibidibur, words, I can actually make kiilu a shliach because I am shaymeya and I'm ka'oyna, and therefore his mouth is as if I said it. What happens in the exchange of speech and hearing different than action. This is what we want to understand. Right? There's going to be a bit, big difference, yeah? Why? Okay, we're going to, we just, so it's true, I mean, so it says in Svarim like this, that on the, on the highest level, last mission is one thing, then, then it divided into two. Okay. So, there is, we said the Mardchai says that it's Shmei Kaina. The Avdi Nezer, which we quoted yesterday in Simon Toflam and Aleph, there was an Avdi Nezer that was quoted. That Avdi Nezer holds that the, you don't say this, the idea of Shmei Ka'oyne with coil. You only say Shmei Ka'oyne in Dibur. It's this far. It says there's two things. There is Dibur, speech, we're going to understand what the oymic is. And then there is like the type of speech. You, you can't make a shliach, you can't say the svar, shmei ka'ina, we'll understand the oymic. He, he, he goes according to pshat, which we said that's the reason why he holds that you have to be mamana shliach and the tekeya, that's the maisa, right? When you're mamana the shliach, say you be my shliach to be blow the shaifer, that's the maisa that you do. He says it can't be mitzvah shmei ka'ina. Davni nezer. This idea is that there's a difference between dibur and koil. There's a difference between speech and sound. The Emes, there's a similar idea from the Rakat and from the Beis Alevi. There's a famous Rakat that says that by Kriyas HaMegillah, when, you, when you're listening to the Megillah, the, the, the mitzvah of Megillah is Lishmoya. The mitzvah of the Megillah is to hear the, the Megillah. Okay, the, you don't need Shemei Ka'oyna, you just Shemei'ah, and you, yitzah, you say Amen. You're Shemei'ah, that's the mitzvah, to hear the Megillah. In Megillah, there's a, there's a minig that when it comes to Aseris B'nai Haman, everyone stops and reads Aseris B'nai Haman alone. Why? So the Rakhachav says like this, because the svara that the person is mimoitza, the person is mimoitza, through Shema Yikaina, only works, the person says, he's reading the Megillah, okay, it's as if I'm saying it. But in the Oifen Ha'amira, in the way he says it, the ten children of Haman have to be said, I have to say, they have to be said in one breath, all together. That's an oifen hamir, that's a type of speech. I, I, I can be yoytze, the, the speech itself, but not the type of speech. So the same svara, really, the, the Beis Alevi gives, he says with, with Bichas Koyinim, there's a mitzvah of the Koyin to Mivarech Klal Yisrael. There's a mitzvah, there's a mitzvah of the Koyin for the Koyin to Mivarech. There's also, according to the Chayyim, the mitzvah is not the person. Shimon Mizbarach. Mitzvah is not What if the Chayyim is not feeling in, in the mood and says, "I want to make a shliach levarech." He says, "No, you can't make a shliach levarech. Why? Because the mitzvah of levarech, as Ami saw be'ava, so it's a type of 
speech. Not just you have to make the bless, you have to bless Kali Sol, but you have to do it with a certain emotion. I can't make a shliach for me to have that emotion. It's, it's an oifen of an amira that I can't make a shliach. This is the svara of the Rakeshavar and the svara of the svara of, of, of the Vesalevi. Totally, uh, completely not relevant to what, we're, what we want to talk about. But anyways, where does it actually say that you have to do Mavarach as Ami Sobava? Where does it come from? Where does it say anywhere in the, in the, in the entire that the, that the Kayan has to bench Kali Sobava? So there's, there's, a, there's a whole entire how this gets, we get to Ava, but there's a, there's a, there's a Peladik Evart from Ram, the Ramdu. The Ramajid of Dvali writes that the Pasik doesn't say Emor Lahem. It says Amor Lahem. So he writes, and if you know, okay, so you know. So if you know Italian or Latin or this, you know that more is love. He says, that's what he says. Amor lahem, the Lashon shall love. This is what I'm doing right. This is the market that you have to say Ba'ava. So Bas Achas is like Yeah, it's a type of a beer. This is what Rakhichev is saying. I can be moitza, shavei ka'ina means your mouth is like my mouth, and you're saying what I'm saying. But the type of saying, I can't, I can't, that I can't make your shliach. It's a type of saying. Let's, let's hold to this far because I just, I, I, we want to understand the, 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 the problem, why the Avna Neza says that there's a difference between Dibur. Why would we say the, the principle of Shemei Ka'ina with Dibur, with speech, and we don't say the principle of Shemei Ka'ina by Kol Shaifer, according to the Avna We said Lahalacha, we don't pass him like the Avna Neza, we pass him like the Mardchai, that is Shemei Ka'ina, that's where you yoytza, if the mitzvah is actually Tkiya. But let's go with the svara. What's the svara of to differentiate between speech and sound? That speech somehow is shemei ka'ina, but sound is not shemei ka'ina. What's the svara? So let's start like this. There's a, a Ramban, the Ramban in Drasha Rosh Hashanah, which is brought down lahalacha shachonarich sim tafka pevav. The Ramban has a chiddush. Doesn't say doesn't say gemara. Doesn't say Bavli, Yashalmi, Seth doesn't say anywhere. The, the Rambam, and this is where it's Paskin, the Beisasa, the Torah, everyone Paskin is like this, Lalacha. Hirchaka Shaifer Mepiv, Lo Yatsa. A person takes a Shaifer and doesn't put the Shaifer into his mouth. Takes the Shaifer and puts a space between his mouth and the Shaifer, and in that space blows the Shaifer, and the wind blows into the Shaifer, and the sound of the Shaifer is blown. <coughs> is, are you Yoytza this mitzvah? Are you Yoytza in the mitzvah? So the Ramban, Paskins, no. And this is what the Shukhalar Paskins. You're not Yoitz in the midst of the Mishnah Brewing brings out a Pasa, Chech of Shoifer and Hoysha, that the, the Shoifer has to be attached to, attached to your mouth. But if the, the, there's, a, there's a half stick between your mouth and the Shoifer, you're not Yoitz. Where does the Ramban get it from? The Ramban gets it from a Taka from a Gemara. The Gemara brings down a Tesef, the Gemara brings down a, a Brisa, which says Tsipo Izov. The Gemara talks about if you, if you take the Shoifer and you put gold on the Shoifer. What happens if you put gold and you don't change the sound? So the, Shokhala, the Gemara talks about if you're changing the sound, it's the same sound as the shofar. What happens if you put it by the piv? You took a piece of gold, and to make the shofar very beautiful, you put a piece of gold right at the place of the mouthpiece, and you blew the shofar. So the Gemara says, no, it's lo yotza. You're not yotza. So the, 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 the Ramban says, just like over there, you're not yotza because there's a hefsik between your mouth and the shofar. So he learns from that. So he deduces from there, so the same thing also if there's a separation between your mouth and the thing. Even if there's no gold, also lo yatsa. But the shaila is a shaila that's yudua. The very famous question that's asked on this Ramban is that there's a difference between the laws of chatzitza and the laws of hefsek. Two separate dinim. The laws of chatzitza means you have something, obstruction, that's placed between your mouth and the shaifer. Chatzitza is, is zav. If you put zav on the end of the shaifer, there's a chatzitza between your mouth and the shaifer. Hefsek is not a longer din, a din of chatzitza. Hefsek, when you don't have anything, there's nothing obstructing your mouth and the shaifer. It's just wind that's coming from the shaifer. So why, why is that? A, how does the Ramban learn the laws of hefsek from the laws of chatzitza? So again, the Avnin Hezer actually writes in the Chum of in the beginning. He has a teretz. And it's a, it's a genius teretz. It's not a chatzitza, no. Why is there a chatzitza? No, chatzitza means it's an object. We have chatzitza is an object. It's hair or floor or shoes. That's a, that's a chatzitza. Then Allah, it's a, if you're, yeah. Ear is not a chatzitza. But if you have your, your tfilm and it's not, uh, you know, there's some ear between. Ear is not a hefsek. It's not, it's not a, it could be a hefsek. It's not a chatzitza. No, that's, that's a chatzitza. That's something, it's an object. 
So the Davenir says like this, a very simple svar. The Gemara says, the Gemara Sukkah Lamed Zayin says, Kol The Gemara talks about a lulav, you know, people make these fancy lulavs and they have, uh, it's not Chabad Minig, but the other customs to have this fancy lulav uh, custom piece, but you're not touching the lulav. What? To hold the minim, yeah, but through that you're holding the lulav, yeah? It's like a... It's not mimim minim, it's not, first of all, it's not a lot of mimim minim. The mimim minim in a chayt is another, that's if the thing is a, is a living thing, this thing is a dead thing, you cut it off. So the did over there is because kol al nice in if you do something for beauty, see, the mitzvah is you have to hold a lulav in your hand, yeah? And so if you grab it with a tissue, you're not yoytza, but if you grab it with that, that case, Technically, it's, 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 it's okay. Of course, halacha, it's okay. Many even do this. That's correct. And kol, the, the principle is kol anaisa ain't a It's something that's done for hana or for, for beauty. Zekhele v'anveh, you're doing it for, to beautify the mitzvah. is not considered a chitzitzah. Says the Avdenezer, okay, so when you have tzipoy zav, it's not the b'tzad din chitzitzah. You can't say b'tzad din chitzitzah because la anaisa. Why did you put the zav on the shoifer? You, you put the zav on the shoifer to make it beautiful. You made it beautiful, you put zav. So you can't say it's within chatzitza. Wait a second, wait a second. It's not the shmir. So that's not, even, that's not the problem. I'm talking about the, the, the idea that the, 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 the b'risa says that if you put zav separating between your mouth and the shoifer with gold. The shoifer is not the mitzvah. That's what I'm saying. What do you mean the shoifer is not the mitzvah? The shoifer itself is nothing. It's not the mitzvah. Okay, that's, a, that's a, we, we just said before. We just said before. You're not yoytza. You're not yoytza. You're not yoytza. You're not yoytza. It has to be a tkiya shal mitzvah. We said that. You, if you geisel the, the shoifer, there's dinim of that, that idea. So the point is, what he's saying is, it can be mitad chatzitza. What is the din mitad? Hefsek. That's the only other solution. It can't be because chatzitza, because it's not a chatzitza. The chalks and the chalks and So why is he put gold by, your, by the shoifer? Because it's a hefsek between your mouth and the thing. Okay, this is, so this is the chiddush of the Ramban, that if there's something missing, if your, your mouth is not touching the shoifer, it's not a good blowing of the shoifer. We want to understand a little bit the oimek. What is the connection of the pele shoifer? Why dafka? Is it a din dafka that the pe has to blow the shoifer? Why and why is it talking like that? The sound of the shoifer. What happens if a wind? Okay, that's ma'isa ba'almahu. Let's say you you shake your hand very uh, strong. You create a wind and it blows and it sounds a shtiya. Or you take it in your nose and you blow it. I don't know because someone's talented and could do this. Is it taka? Is it a problem? Is it is it is it a din that the shoifer has to have the peh? Something about the peh. So I'll pick Kabbalah, clearly, yeah, that the, that the, that oizen is gematria shem sag, sixty three, and peh is gematria eighty five, and peh is shem sag with the twenty two letters. So there has to be a kesher between the oizen and the peh. But I want to understand this first. I'll pick more havana. What is actually the connection between the peh, the mouth? And the shoifer that we say that actually has to be, you know, it's, in other words, what we're saying is that it's not only, it's a coincidence. What is the, 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 the aver that produces the most, the most wind is the mouth. So therefore, the mouth has to blow the shoifer. No. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a gather that the mouth, you need the sound of the shoifer to be blown from a mouth. In other words, it's a din in the pet. It's not a din in the sound. It's not a, it's not, it's, it's a, there's a concept that we need the mouth. The mouth has to create the sound, the sound that has to be heard. We honestly, we're seeing something that it's connected to the mouth. It's not just a coincidence. We find a, a similar idea, but it's a little bit derechaga. We find a similar idea like with the iter, like with a person that's a lefty. So the Gemara says, in Pchoris, Mhei, and Zochim, and and the Menachis, in the beginning, Vav, Ito is patzalavay. The person that's a lefty is patzalavay. Is patzalavay. They can't can't serve a koyin. A koyin that's an iter. A koyin that's a lefty can't serve in, in beis hamikdash. So Rashi writes, "Bechoyers iter yad pasul kivin shenemer v'tavol be'etzboy." Or Darich Chazal, Chazal tells us in Zvachim Chavdalud, "Kol bakish shenemer etzboy v'kuna ein el shal yimin." It has to be dafki yimin. It has to be dafki his right hand, right? So a person that's a lefty cannot do it. Vavoyis haktoyis actually you do find. That he holds the kacholim in his left in his left hand, but we spoke about in ketoyers by ketoyers because that's tafkid avoda of yudal samana ketoyers, and it's to relieve the negative uh, smells, etc., etc. Pizoyer, pizoyer, mernavuchim. But generally, it has to be in the right hand. The Ramam holds gather. The Ramam holds differently. The Ramam doesn't hold that it's a psul because he's a, the Ramam holds that it's a balmum. 
that the person is actually considered a, it's a defect. Al But the, the Rashi and the Ramban, the Lashon of Ramban is Iter ain't lo yamin. The Iter doesn't have a right side. Doesn't have yamin. Gad al pikabola, it's the opposite. The Iter actually has dafke yamin. Because the Iter is, we're created in divine image and opposites. You meet, our right is the is divine left. Our left is divine mean, right? When you say, Oysa Shalom Mim you say to the right to the left, the mean Shal Kadosh Baruch, it's actually the reverse. So actually, the Iter is actually the real, the real image. Okay. It's the right side of the rank. It's the right side of the rank, correct. So the Shaila is, the Shaila is a very simple Shaila. The Shaila is, how could Iter put on film? Again, What's the, how can an itter put on tefillin? Tefillin, you have to put a yatke. A yatke is your smile. An itter doesn't have a smile. If he doesn't have a yamin, like the Ramban writes, and Yavam said he doesn't have a yamin, so then he doesn't have a smile. If he doesn't have a smile, why should he put on tefillin? Maybe he should be possible to put on tefillin. So what's the answer? The answer is very simple. It's very simple. The, the, by by, by avoid us, hakuhuna, you need the right hand. By tefillin, you just need not the right hand. You need the hand that's weaker. So if your left hand is the weak hand, or your right hand is weak, it doesn't matter. You just need the weaker hand. But by the kuhuna, you actually need the right hand. Okay, that's the Derek What we're trying to say is that by the peh, there's a din in the peh, that we need actually the mouth to, to hold the shoifer, to blow the shoifer. So let's start off one, more, one other kuhuna. What's the difference between ria and shmia? Three basic Chilukim, this will understand what this means. It's three basic Chilukim and Ria Shmiya. Simply, Ria is Gashmi, physical. You see physicality. What you see is empirically what you see. That's the truth. That's what we said. That's, that's why the, the Shitta of the Rishonim, like the Evanaz and Obag, is that's the highest sense because you see it. That's what it is. So it's Gashmi, physical. Shmiya is Dover Ruchnim, connected to Ruchnias. To, and I don't mean Ruchnias, Dafka. Uh, emotions, feelings, ideas, that's Shmiya. Another idea about Riyah and Shmiya is that Riyah, you see first the entire thing, the cloud, and then you see the Pratim. When you look at something, the first moment you turn around, you see something. Maybe you don't, it doesn't register, which means you don't have the Shmiya to understand what it is. But the first thing, the first glance that you see it, you see first the cloud. And then when you focus on the klal, in the general, you can see the specific things in that, what you're looking at. So ri is min a prat. Shmiya is a binion of pratim that creates klal. You have, you're listening to one, sentence, one letter, one word, one sentence, then you get a whole structure and you understand the whole sentence, and now you're getting a klal of what the person is trying to tell you. So shmiya is pratim ala klal, and, and ria is klal ala prat. That's the second chilek. Another chilek, which is all connected to this idea, they're both connected to this idea, because the oymik of this idea is that Ria, like we talked by, by the Koil and the Naim, Ria is to see objectively, potentially, if you don't have the whole problem with the Shmiya, but the idea of Ria is to see the thing the way it is. Like we talked about the Rebbe Kiva, Shokacha Bailame, the Gemara says, you have to, that he made the bracha. The Ria is to see the thing as it is. You can mean, like we also mentioned with Yosef Atzadik, that is Lenanev, Lenazun, he saw without taking any pleasure, which means you're seeing the thing outside yourself, objectively, Poten- potentially objectively. What's the, the definition of Shmiya? The, defin- the definition of Shmiya is subjective. The de- definition of Shmiya is that you're listening to what is being presented to you, but you're interpreting it continuously. You're taking pratim, and you're building from these pratim a klal. That's what you're doing when you're, when you're shemeya something. Someone's speaking, and you're listening, you're hearing one thing, another thing, and you're, you're, you're the person that's actually being boina of this binyan. This is what, it's, it's not a passive act if you're really listening to something that you can actually eventually say it over or give it over or understand it, you're really listening to the thing, you're actually participating in this process. Yeah, but the speaker's the speaker is also, wait a second, wait a second, we'll talk about the speaker in a second. We're first talking about the listener. First the listener. The speaker would have given him one shot, maybe? You can't give him one shot. If, well, that, is the, that's the definition of, of the definition of Dibur is Pratim al-Aklal. 
I sure the, 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 it's a relationship between, between the Medaba and the Shemeah. The, Meda, the relationship between the Medaba and the Shemeah is Pratim that's, that's, that's the That's the idea. And therefore, we can understand what does it mean, Shemeah Ka'ina? Why do we say the principle of Shemeah Ka'ina? Because Shemeah Ka'ina, that this is the this is the oimik why you can't say this is any other type of shliach. When you're making a shliach to do a mitzvah for you, the other person is outside of you. You tell someone to put on tefillin, even if shlucha shaladim kamoi say mamish, and it's mamish like you, it's still not you. It's still the other person doing the mitzvah. But when you're listening to something, when you hear something, you are actually a participator, a co-creator in this process. If someone's speaking and no one's listening, then that, it's, a ha- it's, a half a, it's a half a word. In order for someone to, he- when a person hears, they're actually co- completing what is being received. That's the definition of the shmiya is the makabal that actually becomes a mashmiya. And that's why no two people hear the same thing because everyone is hearing through the prism of, of their own understanding and they're being boined at this idea. So because the definition of Shmiya is not passive. It could be, but the idea, the oimik of, of Shmiya is it's co-creative. The speaker and the listener are co-creating and dialoguing in this idea that's being created simultaneously through the, the giver and the receiver. And this is what we talked about yesterday, about the whole idea of but if it's there is mishtama, and like the Ritva says, you don't hear the other sound, or like the Rama says, you're able to hear two sounds, because even if the two sounds came out simultaneously together, and they were mixed at one time, there were two mixed sounds, the listener can deconstruct these two sounds and make them, this one sound and make it into two. Even though the way it came out of their giver, they were actually simultaneously put into like, let's say, sound waves as one mixture, the receiver untangles them and creates two sounds out of these things. Because if there's the chavivus, you can actually do that, which means the receiver actually is participating. And this is the answer to the question of how, if the mitzvah is litkoya shoifer, to blow the shoifer, how could a person be yoytze in the mitzvah with another person is doing like the Rama asked? Because the answer is because by blowing the shoifer and you're listening to the shoifer, it's not only that you're just listening, you're actually blowing the shoifer because you're interpreting that blow of the shoifer. It's, there's a process of not just passive receiving but participating in this unfolding of what you're, of what you're saying. And this is way, maybe why the Avon Nezer has an issue with the difference between the coil and the dibber, which we'll understand in a second why we're not going to go according to the Avnez. But what's the Avnez is saying? The Avnez is saying there's a difference between the coil and the dibber. A coil, a sound, is a dover poshut. This is what the Avnez will say. The coil is, is a very simple thing. It's ah, or tu, turutu. It's a very simple sound. There's very little room for your interpretation of what that sound means. When someone says something to you, but dibber, Okay, every person understands it a different way. But a ah sound or a oo sound, everyone is hearing it the same way. So the coil, in a way, sound, the shemei koina is, is a little weaker by, by, by sound because it would seem that coil, the, 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 you know the difference between coil and, and dibur, the way that Rizal talks about it, the difference between zol malchus or the, the grow brings the shir hashirim, it's the mishamai, mishamati, kolecha, coil is connected with elyon, with the higher, dibur is connected already with speech, which is lower, because the, every, every time we talk, we have the coil, which is like the voice of, the, of, the, of speech, and then we have the, the hey, matzai sapeth, through the five potentials of the mouth, we actually take the coil and we differentiate it, and we create a certain hagdara of that coil, a certain definition of that coil. Now the receiver receives that coil, they also make their own hagdara. They're receiving and they receive their own hagdara. So this is what this is the svaras the avin is lepoil, lahalacha. We actually said no that even coil, even coil, even sound has an interpretation. Uh, has an interpretation. We'll see soon how. But even sound has an interpretation, and every person is shemei koina even in the sound. That's why yoytze kol shoifer. Even though the mitzvah is tkiya shoifer, according to those the Tam, you're still being a yoytze the mitzvah tkiya shoifer because you are participating in the listening of that of that sound. There's a, there's a conceptual shayla. The shayla is, like we started before, we said before, the Torah says, Tikka b'choy the shayfer, you should blow the shayfer, yom tur yilachem, and Chazal are using it as l'shmay kol shayfer, the mitzvah is to hear. So,
So the, there's a ritva in Rosh Hashanah Lamedal at Asna Shaila. How do we know? How does the, the, the famous Rambam on Hilcha Shoifer, the Rambam writes that Rem is Yashlav Dover, that the mitzvah of Shoifer is not only to blow the Shoifer, the Stam, Rahman, the Torah says you should blow, but Rem is Yashlav Dover, there's like a Rem is a hint because it's the Moira person in Tshuva. So the Lashon of Ritva is this. Kivan Ike Mitzvah Shoifer, he says, he, the Ritva wants to answer, how do we know that Shmiya is the Iker? How do we know that to, to listen? So it's like a backwards logic. He says, Kivan the Iker Mitzvah Shoifer la'or l'tshuva v'isoyers b'shmiya talia. So therefore, Akain, the Shmiya hi a Mitzvah. Therefore, the Shmiya is the Mitzvah. Since the Mitzvah is to hear Tshuva, is to be Ma'or Yitzvah, therefore the Mitzvah, he says, is Shmiya. So what the Ritva is saying like this, Chazal look at the, the, the sound of the shoifer like this. They say, it's true. Tika b'chay the shoifer. Tika b'chay the shoifer, why? Ki chay k'li Yisrael hu. Tika b'chay the shoifer means you should blow the shoifer. The mitzvah is ki a shoifer, just like you have to shake a lulav, you have to blow the shoifer. Why? Ki chay k'li Yisrael hu. It's a chay what, sh- what does it mean that it's a chay It's not what I, I listen, what I hear, what it, what it arouses within me. You're not involved in this process. There's no tshuva involved. Why is it tshuva? The Torah says you should, you should do a bris. You do a bris. The Torah says you should blow the shayfer. You blow the shayfer. It's like, it's like the tkiah shayfer of the yavel. The mitzvah is the tkiah. But Chazal say, no, it's not, it's not mamish like that. Why not? Because when something is being blown, something is being heard. When something is being heard, something is being reinterpreted. When something is being reinterpreted, we have to ask what that interpretation is. So Taka the Torah says Yem Tur Lechem, and Tika B'Chay the Shoifer, and it's Taka Achoyk. Achoyk means this is what we do because Hashem wants us to do it. But when you're doing it, something's actually happening. It's not like you know shaking shaking the wall or, or banging your head on the, on the ceiling. This is actually or, or, or cutting wood like the Alter Rebbe's Mashal is. This is actually something happens when you blow a Shoifer. To Taka the Mitzvah, Taka the blow. So the, uh, the, 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 the central mitzvah of shoifer is a chayk. Chayk means it's a tkia. Nothing to do with you. However, since there's shemia involved, which means I'm already listening to it, if there's shemia involved, then, okay, so what am I hearing? So I'm hearing some type of awakening. So it's tshuva. So then there's also the, then the mitzvah of shemia. So what he's saying is, in, in another way of saying it is, lahalacha, why does the Rambam speak about the mystery and the meaning of shoifer in the, in, in the Yad HaChazaka. The Rambam is halacha halacha. The Rambam is, is, is halacha. The Rambam is telling you what you should do, what you shouldn't do. That's a, it's, a, it's a book of halacha. In the middle, the Rambam is talking about philosophy, ideas. Why is the Rambam talking about la'ir tshuva when, in, in halacha? What's the halacha of la'ir tshuva? You understand the shayla? It's a simple shayla. Why is the Rambam saying? Because the Rambam is saying... I hold that the mitzvah is shmi as kol shayfer. The Rambam says, I hold the mitzvah is actually shmi as kol shayfer. Why is the mitzvah shmi as kol shayfer? Because when you blow, you actually hear. If it's shmi as kol shayfer, so why do we hear? What's happening when we hear? Oh, we're happy when we hear. We're actually in oyer l'tshuva. It's actually the halacha. The halacha of, sh- of l'shmoi a kol shayfer is l'shmoi l'tshuva. And you are participating in this process of tshuva. So now we can understand a little bit why the Ramban learn that you have to put your peh l'shoifer. What is a person's peh? What's a person's peh? Peh, the mouth, is the place where a person is misraking, where a person, where the person's inner life, inner subjective life, is able to be projected outwardly. That's the place where your pneumius can be revealed into the, into the world. We have no capacity, only through speech, which is the, the capacity of the mouth to, to empty our inner life into the outside world. And there is no capacity in the world that can receive that in their own subjective way besides the ear. The ear is the, receiving, is the receiver of a person's speech. One person empties their own inner life into the outside. The other person receives the other person's inner life into their own inner life and interprets their inner life differently. That's the ultimate dialogue between the giver and the receiver and both are participating of emptying themselves into the world. One is emptying himself into the other person, the other person is receiving that other person's emptying. This is the place of, 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 of the giver and the receiver. 
That's why, going back to the morale, that's why the morale says that the definition of an Adam, a person, a human being, is someone that can hear. Someone that can hear the possibility of language. This is the beginning of the Torah. It says that a living being, the Tagum writes, Nefesh Amala, creature of speech. The definition of being human is called a Medaber. Why is a person called a Medaber? Because a Medaber is a person that can be misriking. A person can empty his subjective into a person that's a receiver. If you want to give a person their humanity, you have to listen to them. If you listen to somebody, that's the only way you can actually give them their humanity. If you do them a favor, and you did, it's all good, nice things, but to, to, to receive another human being, to receive their inner life in your inner life is, is, what, is what the definition of it means to being receiving another human being. This is the ultimate dialogue, the ultimate connection, which, which that Riza calls in Rosh Hashanah, what's the avoid of Rosh Hashanah, is panam panam. What's the whole idea of Rosh Hashanah? The whole idea of Rosh Hashanah is that there's a, there's a chibur, between, there's a connection between Hashem's inner life that's being revealed for the purpose of revealing creation and the person's rece- receiving that to, re- to connect with the essence of Hashem, the panam upon him, the face-to-face relationship. This is why mitzvah yom b'shoifer. The mitzvah yom b'shoifer, when we say the mitzvah yom b'shoifer, yom tu yolachem, this is a fascinating levush. The levush writes in the Tavkut Pevav that if a person blows the shoifer ten times throughout Rosh Hashanah, they're, they're fulfilling a mitzvah, not a chiv, a mitzvah of Tkiyah Shoifer. Because the Torah calls the day of Shoifer Yom Trua. It doesn't say mitzvah in the day at a specific time to blow the Shoifer. It says Yom Trua. The day is a day of Trua. What, is the, what does it mean to be the day of Trua? The day of Trua means that Rosh Hashanah rep- is the embodiment of what the Shoifer does. The Shoifer does is the Tkiyah Shoifer and the Shemeah Shoifer. This is a parallel to the whole project of Rosh Hashanah. What's Rosh Hashanah? Rosh Hashanah is a time when it's Zayim Tchilus Masecha, it's the day of the creation of the human being. What is the creation of the day? The day is the creation of all the species that came before the human. What happened with the creation of the human being? The difference between the creation of the human being and the creation of all the animals that came before that is that all the other creations had a him or acher acher relationship, a back-to-back relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which means Hashem is the creator and their creation, and they're receiving creation, and that's the end of the story. So acher acher means they're always attached, they're, they're, they're constantly, but they're not even having an encounter. What's the creation of the human being? That Adam goes to sleep, and there's the Nasir, the separation between Adam and Chava, and Adam and Chava are no longer Zachar and Akeva, Bara Oisam, that they're back to back, but they're, sewn up, they're, 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 they're split apart so they can have a face to face relationship, and that's going to be Pano upon him. And the Pano upon him relationship is dialogue, where you can speak and I can listen, where a person has Pchira, unlike the, uh, unlike the other, uh, other creations, but a person has Pchira and says, I have an inner life, just like God, you have an inner life, and I would like to share your inner life with my inner life. And let's meet. And the, 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 the marshal of the, of the, of the, the Baal Shem is Schwindel Trap. Schwindel Trap is a spiral staircase. It's a fancy word, but it's actually a Rashi. Also, in Nachsor, that Schwindel Trap is a spiral staircase. That Rosh Hashanah is when you get to the higher level and you're finally face to face and you're finally face to face and you're spiraling in time. The Alter Rebbe writes in, in the Sefer Mamorim, Tovkov uh, Samache, that the Oymek Toyasari, the depth of the Toyasari and the whole Rosh Hashanah is in this marshal of this Schwindel Trap. And if you understand the spiral staircase, you understand the secret of the whole Rosh Hashanah. Because what is Rosh Hashanah? Rosh Hashanah is Hashem says, I want to have a relationship with you. I want you as a human being with your own free choice, with your own inner life, with your own doubts and your own uncertainties. And the person that you are, I want to dialogue with you. I want a pun upon a relationship. Pun upon a relationship is very tenuous because pun upon it, they're facing each other, but each one can move away. Back to back, you can't move away. You're stuck. Panam upon him, which is a real encounter, which we have a real encounter with another human being, we have a real encounter with God, means we're having an encounter where I am emptying myself out into, into Hashem and Hashem, and we're receiving Hashem's presence fully in my life, in the place that I am. There's kavi achel, two subjective beings that are interconnecting with each other. And that is the oimek of why tchia shoifer, 
Shmiya Shoifer, and the Shemea actually becomes a Tekea, and then the Tekea, the, shem, the Tekea, which is Kabbalah Shoifer Godel, actually becomes a Shemea, it feels Amcha Yisol Berachman. And now we'll take some Shilas. Correct. That's correct. Why do we have Shemiya without Shemiya means, the definition of Shemiya means, Shemiya means that I have a personal life separate from you. No, no, no. Acher doesn't. No, that's that, that's a panel upon him. If you listen to somebody deeply, that's a panel upon him. A panel upon him is face to face and physically. Oh, so the is just a metaphor. It's a metaphor. If I receive someone's words, so if I'm a kabbal, something that someone said a thousand years ago, but I'm a kabbal in my pnimis and I try to understand what was the inner life of this person, how that inner life interacts with my inner life, then that's actually a panel upon a relation. It's not a physical thing. That's what Rosh Hashanah is. There's a there's a there's a being. That's separate, that is a shemea. In other words, let's, let's understand conceptually. Tikka b'choy the shoifer, malachim can have tikka b'choy the shoifer. If the mitzvah is tikia, yom trua yilachem, so malachim, the acher b'acher, and the Abish says you should blow the shoifer. An animal can blow the shoifer. A maisa koif ba'alma can blow the shoifer. But if I'm saying that no, that I have to participate as my human, my, my most human part of self, what is my most human part of self? My mouth. The place of my speech. In the place of my speech, I'm going to be Tekea, and then in the place of my humanness to receive that, I'm going to be a Shemea. And I can be even be Yoitza, according to the Shikta that says that the mitzvah is Tekea, because by my listening, I'm actually Ka'oyna Mamash. It's Piv Ki Piv. I'm, I'm reinterpreting what I'm hearing in my own analogy. This is, everyone happens, this is what happens when you hear a sound of Shoifer. So this is, this is what we're saying. It's not like the Avni Nezer. It's like the Mardchai. Because really, every time you're listening to something, even if it's a sound, how are you interpreting that sound? Yeah, tshuva is a very nice word, but what's tshuva to you? Every person has their own way of understanding what tshuva is. What do I need to do tshuva for? What is tshuva for me? That's already my interpretation. So I'm participating in this, in this idea. I'm actually a, a taikea in the shemea. That's what we had from the Ritva. He's saying that if, you're, if, if the Torah says you should blow, you must say when you're blowing, there's someone that's listening. And if someone's listening, that means someone's interpreting. What's the interpretation? Tshuva. Yeah, well. You see that uh, potentially the language used for Dover yeah. is the Rambam. Yeah. Uh, Mishnah, yeah. Mishnah, yeah. Saying that all year a person is not able to, uh, to be at that level of being able to hear. So the language is maybe that now you by being more from the shaper, now you could hear Emma, you really hear the real sounds. This is a very good word. You, now you're human. Today's your birthday, and today be the most human. Yeah, the, 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 the shaper will be that sound, will awaken you to the, the, the depth of what it means to be a human being. What it means to be you, but the, what it means to even be a human, to be a shemei, Amish. If we're saying that the shaper happens to be the listener, not the people coming down. No, it's a medaber shemei. I didn't say the tachlis to the listener. To listen to the Abish's words, we have in the Sasabas. The to listen to the, the worlds of the universe, but to you, to you, you have to be expressive. That's the that's the Panam upon him. Yeah, well, I was going to say, it, it, it's interesting. It's through the Barasa that the, we, we become a Madabar, which is the, the, the Barasa on the Shmia. Right. We actually, we actually speak it. Say it. So Correct. We're making a sound about, about listening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And also, this is also why Rosh Hashanah, what do we do the whole day, Rosh Hashanah? We speak. That's what you're supposed to do, Rosh Hashanah, the whole day. No, Davin. I'm not saying speak to other people. You're supposed to speak to God. The whole day, Rosh Hashanah, you're supposed to speak. Why is it, why is it such a, why is it such an akuda in, in why is choice? So long? Yeah, why is Machsah so long in Rosh Hashanah? Why are we so busy with the Machsah the whole time? And, and it's a lot of the stuff we don't, people don't even say. There's a lot of piyutim and things. Why, why, why is it the whole speak? Because that's what it means to be human. That Rosh Hashanah is the birth of humanity. The birth of humanity is Yom Teruah. That's the day when we can give, when we can be Takeh and we can be Shemeah. We can, we can hear the Abish, the Hashem's call, and we can be a Takei to Hashem. It can be a Tshuva to awaken Hashem, and be a Tshuva towards Hashem. So I was wondering if you could apply this uh, interesting uh, idea about Shmiya being uh, more interpretive. Um, I'm wondering if you, could, if you, or I guess if somebody else, has uh, applied that to the Machloket in Rosh Hashanah. Aha. Usually, this Zeroim is called a very classical definition. Zeroim is usually for sh- Gashmi, uh, Shmi is. You get physics, so Zeroim is called they were able to see spirituality. So, according to Rabbi Akiva, 
Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a Hasidic, yeah, everyone says it, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I know there's a sitch about the Rebbe in there. Yeah, that's the same idea, same. Um, but if, if, is there something just particular, like, if we're hearing, if we're seeing what, what should be heard, then we're seeing something objectively that is subjective. Yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying. You're trying to say that if seeing is a type of, 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 of objective type of, uh, uh, interaction with life, yeah. and Shmi is like in a subjective a interaction with life. Maybe about the Torah, things became clear and our subjective was clean. Yeah. Like there, there was there was no longer Shmutz. There was there was Paskazu Masam. There was no longer this inner narrative that we were able actually to hear from a place of seeing, yeah. like to hear in a very pure way. Isn't that the isn't that the also at the end? Yes, yeah, similar to that. Idea. Like, yeah, the Shtikel from Sasem is like that. Right, it's whatever he says. The whole point is that you was it was Rayat Shmiya. Right. Yeah, that we were able to internalize it, but it was also shmiyak and rayyah. It wasn't. Uh, it didn't get that jumble along the way. We heard it exactly as it came. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's like it's a little liquid, not a liquid that some some type of hearing. Because usually, what we're hearing, because we're human beings, we have an inner life. We're hearing through our own projections. For better or for worse, that's what that's the myla of seeing. Because when you're seeing something, you're actually seeing it. You could see shikacha without the story. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. So the, the, the imagery of, of Pascha Zumasam that we were cleansed and Yatsa Nishmasam can mean that we're refined from this inner life that we're just able to see pure, we're able to hear pure Hashem's voice as if we're seeing it without any projections. But that's not Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, Hashem actually wants our humanity. Because it's Tshuva. So Hashem says, like, no, I want to actually know what's going on in your inner life. Don't tell me you're pure and holy. I, that's Yom Kippur. I, actually, tell me what's, what's the Tshuva that you need. What's the Urim Mishnaschem? Where are you waking up from? Uh, it, it says that in some yeah. places say that because that makes that's just for also for concentration. Also, like when you damish monaser, right? There's, there's, there's an idea there's some, for a lot of reasons for concentration to close your eyes, but there's also like you're shutting yourself. The shalakot says you're shutting yourself from the physicality, from the world of impressions through seeing. No, it's not Allah. No, no, it's not Allah. The, the Magen of the Magen of Ram actually writes by, by 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 davening that it actually depends on your concentration. If you can concentrate with your eyes closed, daven closed. If you can concentrate with your eyes open, you should look at the siddur. But, but you look at the bottom afterwards. 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 That's a pida rizal. That's I'm talking about din, because the the all the the red comes out and the the dinim leave. The whole idea of shoifer is I'm talking about din. It's generally shoifer as I'm talking about din, because shin. Is three hundreds of the miracle of the Shem Elokim. Pei Vav is eight, eight, uh, eighty-six is also Shem Elokim, and Reish is also another Shem Elokim. How you spell Elokim? It's all of Takas Adin. The Shav Par of Par Par Nitzaitzes. You're breaking the Nitzaitzes. The whole idea of, of Shofar is, you, is you're breaking the Koyach But what, what, what we're really saying, in, in, in related to what we're talking about, is you're 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 bringing out that that the, the inner voice in the Takia part, which is beyond all the junk that's that's blocking it and you're able to express it and also when you're shemea you have to you, you have to be shemea that you're shemea the coil of uh, kol gadol you're shemea the, the, the sound of hashem this, the, the 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 sound of shofar is actually two things you, you're blowing it you're receiving it you're receiving you're blowing it it's different levels of shofar yeah that's correct that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. That's what's going to be the shit that I'll say the Ikka Mitzvah. When you're actually, shime, when you're actually listening to the Shaifa, you're actually Takeya. Therefore, you can make a bracha. Yeah, but it's the interpretation. Uh, correct. No, in other words, the reason why Shemeya Kaina, because since the Alter Rebbe says that the Ikka Mitzvah Shemeya, that's why he could say that you're actually Yoytzah And how does all this Alter Rebbe for Kiddush and Kaira, the Shaifa, the sound of the Kiddush, and the Shaman? Yeah. We t it's, we're talking about dialogue. It's the same thing. Why don't we, like a person talks. No, it's different than deeper. Yeah, deeper than coil. It's, it's, a deeper, it's a deeper voice. But we're saying that even coil has interpretation. What, what was the original context of Shomei Ha'amein? Was that in, 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 in the... In Nechaz Brachas. Like Bichas Amazin and Amein. Yeah, it was good as it fell out of the, the sources. What's, what's, the, uh, what's the muscle of Shomei Ha'amein? Oh, yeah. Shindel Tap is like this. <laughs> it's, sh it's a German word, by the way. Schwindel trap. It's it's a. Uh, it's actually it is a Rashi. Uh, 
Correct. Then you get to then you get to face to face. You have to go all the way around. You know? yeah, and you have to get away to the higher level until you get to face to get. It. So you're going you're going away to get higher, away to get face to face. And every year Rosh Hashanah you get to back to the face. You get a pond upon it. But it's like this it's like it's Correct. The circle calendar, Panama upon is Rosh Hashanah. By night. That's correct. And the morning, when the, the, the blowing of the shaifa is the Panama upon him. Absolutely, the Shindle trap. Shindle trap. Huh? What's the lotion of that? Right, that's something else. That means you can blow without touching it. What are you saying? What's the lotion? No, what's the lotion? We're talking about a geisel shefer, the yoytza, right? Yeah, because you're not, you're not, you're not nana for the. Right. No, the altar. The tkia. Yeah, the Alter Rebbe writes it, but the Alter Rebbe writes it, that's the Lashon Ola. Shem Shemiyah is called Shavu Iker HaMitzvah, Shaya Tekei, Lashon Ola, Shavu Ola Yatza. A Mukoma came in, Avar Etal, Birch, Lutkoi, B'Shoifer, Tkia Shoifer, Yatza. So there's the Iker HaMitzvah, and not like the Rambam. The Rambam holds that the tkia is just a hechsher. It's like building a, sh- a sukkah right. to get the Shoifer. The Alter Rebbe holds, it's like the Minchas Chinuch and the Shagasari, the older other Acharyim hold like this, that there's a mitzvah, it's talking, the Iker mitzvah is, is the, is the Shemiyah, but there's also part of the bat mitzvah. Chelik of the mitzvah is the tkiya, v'haraya. Correct? Because it's not the ikr. Because the ikr mitzvah. Okay. This is what sound is all about. This, I'm sure, not sound. This is what hearing is all about. We should be zoichataka to hear the kol Hashem. Tkal b'shayf v'gadol. Mayrev.